Well, I'll go ahead and get us started here. Uh, my name is Brady Hunt. Uh, I'm one fourth of the Drone Vision team, along with my teammates, Kimberly, Kennedy, and Nadia. Uh, we'll admit I'm probably the least talented of the four, um, uh, but they were all a pleasure to work with. Um, they all had very good information and good insight uh, into decision making, uh, and I was very pleased to work with them. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to jump right in and we'll go over um, the financial review of Drone Vision. Uh, the first one we'll talk about is our annual total revenue. Um, we're pretty proud to say that our revenues raised every single year, um, except year 13 to 14, uh, where you did see a little bit of a dip. Um, that was mostly because we couldn't meet demand uh, in some of our sales. We didn't expand our production facilities enough. Um, and so while we were waiting for those to expand, we ended up raising the prices uh, in order to try to maximize the profit and get the amount of demand under uh, so we weren't wasting any. Uh, and then it ended up actually, we, we raised the price too much and the sales came in a little bit less than we had expected. Um, but for total revenue in years 13 and year 15, we did break the 1 million mark, which we were pretty happy about. Uh, then following that was our earnings per share. Um, it either improved or maintained each year. Uh, there was a very slight dip between year seven and eight, uh, and that was mostly due to changes we had made in our drone strategy, as well as competitors' movements uh, and their strategy. Um, and after that year, we had to really sit down, uh, focus on our drone strategy, reassess, uh, and then reapply a new strategy, uh, which you see a uh, definitely put us in the right direction uh, and everything either, again, improved or maintained as far as earnings per share went each year. Uh, next is the uh, ROE. Um, the ROE exceeded investor expectations every single year, except for year 13. Uh, and that would most likely be because we, that's when we started to realize we need to needed to expand our facilities. Uh, and we spent a lot of money uh, expanding those facilities. Um, and it was a two-step two process in expanding the facilities. One, uh, expanding the workstation, and then the following year, uh, installing the workstations. Um, so with, with that drop in money, lowered the amount of cash we had on hand at the end of the year, uh, which ended up lowering our ROE. And then credit rating. Um, that will be the next one. It never decreased at all. Uh, we, didn't, we did not take out any loans. Um, we ended up repaying all of our loans off uh, by year 11. Uh, and then we did struggle a little bit to get to the A plus until the very end, um, partially because we were spending too much money uh, on either dividends, expansions, or repurchasing the stock, which lowered the amount of uh, cash we would end up having on hand at the end of each year. Uh, the next category is stock prices, um, which did rise eight out of the 10 years uh, of this uh, simulation. Um, year 11, year 14, uh, or year 11, year 13, and year 50, we were leaders. Um, the largest improvements came from year 13 to year 14, uh, where we actually increased our stock price from net by $99.49. And then the largest increase actually was the final year, uh, years 14 to 15. Uh, we increased our stock price by a total of $193.42 that year um, to have one of the highest stock prices actually in the entire simulation. Uh, and then finally, uh, image rating. This was something that we decided in the beginning uh, we wanted to focus on. Um, we, from the very first year, we ended up uh, investing 8% of our operating profits uh, to charitable causes uh, and invested in every single corporate social responsibility and citizenship initiative that was available, um, as well as the uh, maximizing the investment into the green initiative um, as a as a result of this, we won the Corporate and Social Responsibility Award uh, every year. Um, we did take a slight dip in the image ratings at the end because we started messing with the amount of, the amount of models that we were offering, which ended up lowering our PQ rating, uh, and that caused a little bit of dip in the image rating. Um, but other than that, we, we were very focused on the image rating uh, from the beginning, and I think it shows. And then as when it comes to strategic vision, um, from the beginning, we said that we wanted to uh, be a leader 
um, and building legacies and sharing history with the future generations by capturing the most important moments and memories in the world. Uh, and we planned on capturing the highest world market share of drone and camera sales in order to achieve this goal. Um, it was, you know, we wanted to have the highest sales in every region. Uh, year 13, we actually did have the highest market share of both camera and drone uh, in every single market. Um, and we decided that we were going to do this by offering a lower price model uh, and uh, having the best warranty uh, in the industry, as well as spending a lot of money on advertising. That was, uh, we wanted it to be accessible to everybody um, and then, you know, kind of back our product. And then we were, you know, it had this simulation continued um, to go on for the next couple of years. The, the targets we were looking at uh, would have been to increase our earnings per share. Uh, at, at the end, the final two years, it was rising pretty steadily. So in year 16, we felt that it would be fair to be shooting for $24 uh, and then get it up to over $30 with a $30 minimum in year 17. Um, return on equity. We know we were generally second um, in return on equity towards the end there. Um, group E did have a very high return on equity. So our goal was to try to raise up to meet them uh, and get there. Uh, we weren't sure that it would happen in one year. Uh, so we decided that we would take it in steps with year 16, trying to be at 75% minimum, and then year 17, trying to be at a 90% minimum, um, again, with being able to uh, reassess after each year and adjust if needed to. Um, as far as credit rating would go, it would be to maintain an A+. Plus. We didn't have any intention of taking out any more loans. Uh, so as long as we just maintain that A+, plus moving forward, we would have been satisfied. Um, again, image rating was something that was very important to us. So we wanted to make sure we got that back up to a minimum of 93 and ideally back up to the 99 that it was. Uh, and then stock price, we wanted to continue to see that rise uh, with earnings per share going up and return on equity going up. We felt that the uh, $700 mark in year 16 would be fair. And then uh, 875 minimum in year 17, that should say, um, would have been our goal for that. Brady, thank you for all the information. Um, he pretty much summarized all of our uh, presentation, but we're gonna get into uh, the camera strategy that we had. Um, so when we first had our meeting, like uh, back in the year five, uh, one of the first things that we discussed about was, you know, uh, providing the uh, a value-based pricing for our market uh, because we wanted to be, you know, the top uh, industry out there. Um, and right from the get-go, like there was four things that we thought it was very important for us. And it was the price of the camera, the PQ rating, uh, the warranty period, and the market share. Um, and because everybody started with uh, not a lot of, there, everybody had the same uh, data in there. It was going to be really hard for us to uh, figure out what each person or each uh, group was going to um, was going to make a move um, related to the decisions. And so we just wanted to go with the value based pricing. And in order to back us up in that we right from the get go um, offered 360 days of uh, warranty period for our customers. And this was something that we stood by from year six all the way to year 15. And we would have continued to uh, provide that if the, uh, if we continue to uh, go through the, with, the, with the simulation. And so um, in year 10, it was pretty cool that we were able to see that there was four out of the five companies, uh, uh, other companies that um, also matched us at the 360 days of the warranty period. And by that same year, uh, we had the highest market share in uh, three of the uh, continents, uh, the first one being North America uh, with a 21.9%, um, and then Asia Pacific with a 25.4% market share, and then Latin America with 24.2%. And then kind of rewinding two years back, uh, like Brady said, uh, one of the things that made a huge impact in our uh, numbers and our sales and everything, it was investing in advertising. Um, we were in second place for a long time, but in year eight, we were kind of uh, comparing ourselves to Eagles, which was in first place. And we were trying to figure out what they were doing that we weren't doing. 
and we realized that they were the only company that was actually investing a lot into advertising. And that's when we decided that in year nine, we were going to invest a lot in uh, advertising. And that major, made a hu huge impact in how our business went from that year on. And then on year nine, um, that's when we had the opportunity to do the special contract with the retailers. And because, as Brady said, we did have um, a, a lot of pride into our image rating, uh, we did have a high value index, and uh, we were able to um, make deals and get contracts with all the continents. Uh, the first one being Latin America, we were able to have a contract with them from uh, year nine until year 15. And then North America and Europe, Africa, uh, we had the contract with them from year nine until year 13. And then Asia Pacific, we had a contract with them from year nine to 14. And then moving on to our drones, uh, we kind of had the same uh, idea there um, of strategy. We wanted to follow the value-based pricing as well. Um, but as we started to kind of you know, uh, experience uh, the market uh, against all, uh, the competition against other companies and everything um, that was not really working for us. And so we decided to kind of go lower with our price and our PQ rating because we kind of wanted to uh, attract more buyers. And we believe that with a lower price, people were going to were going to want to buy more. And then then eventually, as the years started to go by, um, we started to reinvest in the quality of our drones and consequently raising the price of it as well. And then for the uh, since the beginning all the way to the end, like we always did really good with uh, sales uh, in North America and in Europe, Africa. But up from the beginning up to year 11, we were struggling a little bit to get buy-in from Asia Pacific and Latin America. And so in order to get buy-in from them, um, we kind of had it to backtrack again and lower the PQ rating and the price uh, as well. And then invest a little bit more in website display and search, and search engine. Um, and then this was actually su successful because uh, in years 12 and 13, uh, we were uh, we had uh, the highest market share in all the continents at the same time. Uh, so that was a huge win for us. And then um, as Brady was talking about, we did uh, raise our uh, number of drones that we were providing. And we were the only ones in year 13 through 15 providing four, four drones uh, on there. So um, yeah, we were really trying to uh, impress the our customers to get the highest market share as we as we could. And then for a production strategy, um, right from the get go, we wanted to uh, upgrade our robotics because we think it was going to be very valuable in the long run. Um, as Brady said as well, uh, we did spend a lot of money uh, upgrading it at, at first in the short term, but then in the long term, we thought that it was going to be very beneficial to us because we wouldn't have to use uh, four pr uh, product assembly teams. We would only have to use three. And so in the long run, that was going to save us money. And then we were going to be able to, I'm sorry, invest in other things. And then this kind of leads to the assembly facilities. Um, in two to three, uh, there was two or three years where we could not produce as much as what was demanded from us uh, because our market share was really high or our demand uh, was really high and everything and we didn't have enough space for uh, workstations. And so we had to wait year after year um, in order to be able to actually uh, keep that demand and so we were we learned from that mistake and we were kind of proactive and started to pre-install those workstations even though we did have space um, just to prevent us from getting into that area again where we didn't have enough uh, uh, workstation in order to produce what was demanded from us um, just so we can you know be affected by the loss of uh, sales or anything like that so um, we learned from from that mistake and we made sure that we kept pre pre upgrading those um, workstations going forward 
And then from our workforce compensation strategy, um, as you can see from the screenshots that we had from year 15, it was basically the same thing every year um, from the beginning. We didn't really spend much time looking at this. Um, and so the areas of opportunity is base wage, assembly quality incentive, and attendance bonus. Um, as you can see, our company was very low compared to the industry average. And I believe that this could have been one of the things that we could have done in order to get to that first place. Um, and this would be definitely something that we would work on if the simulation kept going on, because we think it is very important. Um, but I guess we were kind of distracted with, you know, trying to get the earnings per share and return on equity and everything else high that we didn't even pay att much attention to this as we should have. But on the other hand, we did uh, invest very high. Uh, we did take it very seriously in corporate citizenship. Um, and uh, with this, it did come, you know, some resources that we were able to provide to the employees, which was, you know, provided cafeteria and on-site childcare facilities for plant employees, as well as additional safety equipment and improved lighting ventilation. Overall, the three chief elements of Drones Vision's financial strategy are repurchasing stocks, paying dividends, and paying debt. Our use of debt slash equity was 991 last year and projected at 793. Actions we took to achieve and maintain a strong credit rating included raising our credit from an A minus to an A plus in years six to 15 by maintaining lower prices but better quality items. We also issued dividends to raise our return on equity. For dividend increases, years five to 15 dividend per share increased from zero to two. Total dividends payments increased to years five to 15 from zero to 34,152. So our top two competitors for our AC cameras would be the Eagles and Beta Digital. And for Eagles, the reason for cameras would be the lower prices they had compared to ours. We're going to use North America as an example. So for year 15, our cameras were priced at 468 while theirs was at 449. We did have lower price cameras in Latin America compared to Eagles though. Ours was 367 and theirs was 399. Another reason Eagles had an advantage would be their equal PQ rating, which we both shared 5.7 stars. Their value index was higher in each country except for Latin America as well. And for Beta Digital, they had a better PQ rating. We had 5.7 while they had 7.6, which was the best out of all the competition. They also had a higher value index except for Latin America, which we were higher with a 73 and they had a 68. And with this, our top two competitors for our drones would also be the Eagles and Beta Digital. Eagles had a greater retailer recruitment of 347.22 while we had 335.97. Beta Digital had a higher PQ rating of 6.3 compared to our 6.0. They also had a higher discount for online retailers of 10% while we had 9%. And both companies had equal or lower prices. Eagles had an equal price at 2,400 like how ours was and Beta Digital had 2,050. So how can we take action against this? We can do a few things. For our cameras, we can up the value index. This can help us get a special contract. We can try to increase our PQ rating for a better quality. Another thing we could do is focus on all the countries we provide for instead of one main country. This can help us with an increase in the market share, which can help us against our competition. Advertising is always good for promoting, so we're gonna to try to advertise as much as possible. One last thing we could do is set a benchmark for a warranty. For example, we had a high warranty at the start and when other companies realized they soon joined in. And with this, we'll have similar actions for our drones. Increasing the PQ rating would help boost sales for better quality. Working on our retailer recruitment would also help us with connections for stakeholders and boost our retail sales. We can also work on our market share as well for the drones to help gain a bigger audience, and we can do this by advertising. But we did really well with the drones. We crafted a winning strategy by using best cost provider strategy because we had lower prices for cameras and UAV drones in all countries and provided high quality items at lower prices compared to our rivals. For example, in year 15, we had the lowest price for AC cameras in Latin America at $367 offered in the market for that continent. 
We also use a focused information strategy for Latin America and Asia Pacific. These strategies helped us maintain our lead. Do's and don'ts for financial success. A don't would be to waste money on things that aren't beneficial to the company. Do operate in a business that is socially conscious and considering how their actions affect the community, employees, and the environment. Don't undervalue employees because they are a huge part of the company and it could lead to staff shortages and lower production quality. Do invest in advertising to keep up with competition and gain bigger audience. And finally, don't downgrade the importance of corporate citizenship. Corporate social responsibility helps keep a good brand reputation and plays an important role for the company's structure as a whole. And then we just wanted to include this on there um, that out of 1,143 uh, teams in the, uh, 66 different colleges um, for the week, we were able to uh, get 66. Uh, we tied at 66th place um, for the week. And then um, our earnings per share of $20.35 was the 27th best. Uh, worldwide, and then our stock price of $576.33 was the 23rd best stock price uh, worldwide as well. So we just wanted to thank you for taking the time to uh, hear us present our uh, capstone presentation for Globus, um, and that is it. Thank you.